a lot of times when I mean I've done like about 650 of these things a lot of times the, the that what happens before the podcast is a lot interesting more interesting than what right, happens during right. the podcast right. anyway um so we're 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 after the bye week are we all refreshed are we all what what, what did you guys do during when the Steelers don't play do you watch beach. other football <laughs> do you do you, do you live I a did, normal yeah. life yeah, yeah. I watched other football and and didn't stress. Do you know what I mean? And and that's kind of nice. It feels almost like a little mini vacation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting how much more productive I am <laughs> when, right. when, when there's not Steelers football on. I, I, you know, I, yeah. I still watch the other games, but I tell you, not what. as intense. You know, well, I spend the day before like obsessing, then the day of the game obsessing and watching, and then the day after lately like mourning the loss. Uh, you know what I mean? And and being mad and taking notes for the podcast and stuff like that. So without any of that to do, I was like, wow, look at all this free time I have. Watching a Steeler game is so emotionally draining for just all those reasons oh, that you is. said. It no is. No matter what, you get fired up. You got, I'm already fired. I'm fired up. Remember when, when Joe Hayden had that phantom pa- pass interference call against the Saints yes. a few years ago that like ruined that game and ruined the season? I'm still thinking about that. So I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm pre angry. It but, instantly makes you angry when you bring back those yeah. old things like Jesse James catching the ball, like, yeah, yeah. Pass all that interference. And like, like immediately, yeah, it immediately makes you mad. But when you watch other football games, it's just, it's entertainment. It's like, oh, the Bills are losing. That. I wonder if the Bills or I wonder if the Jets are going to win this game. Oh, oh. pretty awesome. Yeah. It's also Let's sad clap. to see how other offenses play. Okay. The then it goes. I sort of remember things like they're actually going down the field and getting into the red zone and hey, right. look, they're scoring. You know what I mean? Like the quarterback throws the ball and the receivers catch it. What? And he throws it more than three yards and to the middle of the field. I thought that was outlawed. I thought there was a rule against throwing to the middle of the field in, in, in the NFL. Right. Apparently it's not. Apparently it's just a steal. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, like, one of the things that makes me the most bitter is, like, not even just, like, the flubs we make on, like, plays or not even calling plays well but it's like watching other teams i have these like impressive progressions been watching the vikings play a lot this year and 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 kirk cousins i think is like a eh, so so quarterback you know what i mean i don't think he's great by any means but but he's got some solid weapons on there they've built this offense around what his particular strengths are and and they're freaking seven and one like the vikings do you know what i mean and they're they're still doing things to yeah, they're still doing things to like constantly improve, like the trade. They got a new tight end because their tight end was kind of crappy. And and you know what I mean? And like immediately the kid made like an impact. And so like you watch these other teams that like even at seven and one, they're still like improving every week. And and I wish I felt like we were doing that. Like it takes the sting out of the rebuild or whatever you want to call it. If you feel like you're at least making steps forward every week but i don't i don't feel like we're there like stupid penalties still like week eight you know what i mean yeah that's what i'm looking forward to seeing like did they really use the bye week you know are they going to come out or are they going to yeah, be very curious we're in the first half like that's what i'm most looking forward to seeing yeah i think that's the biggest question is is this offense going to do anything Right. Is right. is did they learn anything? Did they take this time to come together? Did they, are they going to are they going to do anything? Is Kenny Pickett going to progress? Is, is is I think that's the main thing. Is 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 this offense going to do anything? And I've heard it said that they should simplify the offense. And this is what I've been saying for a long time now. This Matt Canada offense is too complicated, and that's probably why every single freaking quarterback that's in it uh, does not succeed in it because it's too complicated. So yeah, simplify it for the rookie. Simplify it for Cam. Yeah. And maybe yeah. it is. I don't know. We're not there, but it's it seems like it's the same like run, run, pass, run, run, pass, run, run, pass. Like I struggle to figure out like what's so complicated about it when like the mailman can call defense for whoever we're playing against because there's just there's just no spark there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, that's it's nothing be, new. I think Kenny Pickett's going to have his first real chance to, since he's been a starter, to really play 
And I say yeah. that because the Saints have like two interceptions. I read something on Twitter today, two interceptions and 258 pass plays. Yeah. Like, and terrible have been terrible against the run. I mean, the Ravens right. ran all over them. And yeah. they've got two key defenders that are either out or at least not playing at 100%. So, I mean, you should hope we'd be able to get something going on the run game this week against them. Yeah, my concern is that they blew out the Raiders. Like, I don't yeah, I don't pay attention to either team, the Saints or the Raiders, enough to know why. But to blank another team is difficult to do. So, I wonder, yeah. kind of, uh, like, was their defense just different than they were, you know, last night against the Ravens? Like, what? how does yeah. that happen? I don't even know. Well, the Saints, yeah, the Saints strength is supposed to be their defense. So we'll right. see. We'll yeah. see. Um, right. I'm telling you now, and I'm going to put this out on Twitter. If the Steelers start their first drive and it's the first three plays are run, run pass, I will give someone a hundred dollars. <laughs> I am so sick and tired of this. I swear. I swear if they start run, run, pass, I am going you to. You might be able to keep your money if you said if they if they don't. Do you know what I mean? Right. You could keep I your money. I was thinking of betting people. I, out run, run, pass. I was thinking of betting people, but but then that's, you know, then I'd have to run my own sports book and stuff but like hey, that. What was it? I, Two or three games ago, we actually saw them come out with something new. I forget which who we were playing that week, two two games ago, and, and saw them come out with something new, and everybody was they like, yeah. on it. And, and scored, yeah. Yeah, well, and, 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 and it just, yeah, that's but then cool. for the rest of the game, they were like, that's it, that's all we had. That's it, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah we're... Not, nothing else. Yeah, that's that's what it was for me anyway. It was the, it was yeah. the touchdown to Derek Watt where I was like, who is that? Yep. What? And right, I, right. It was kind of, whatever play it was, it was kind of, it was interesting. It was something they had never... I it was it was really, Chase Claypool. It was a it was a give to Chase Claypool and Chase Claypool yeah. through the touchdown right. through the Derek touchdown Watts. Pass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's then I thought, oh my gosh, let's just keep doing that. And I'm like, wait a minute, no, the Steelers are not going to do that. And well, just, and immediately all of us that are a little older had like flashbacks to like some of the great plays with like with like Hines and and uh, Antoine Randall. Randall L. L. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, like immediate <laughs> flashbacks to those awesome trick plays we used to run. They even talked about one of the one of the commentators had mentioned how um, Steven was it, I think it was Steven Sims he was saying or it reminded him of Antoine Randall L because of his kind of you know his yeah you know okay. shitness or his ability to do all kinds of different things and so we'll see I like that kid. Yeah, that's like why him. this that's why they traded Chase Claypool because he was becoming a better quarterback than Kenny Pickett. And and you can't have that. <laughs> you can't have that conflict so that you have to get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean I, I got a team of writers. They're 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 in the other room. They're, they're feeding me lines. Uh, was trying to avoid, avoid the <laughs> avoid the quarterback controversy in the um, middle of the season. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but speaking of Chase Claypool, so they traded him. Uh, <laughs> they traded him what? And, and what? Yeah, really. And, um, they traded him to the bears and he plays for the bears and he did, he, he, he ran the, the chase Claypool greatest hits package, right? Right. In one game, <laughs> dropping passes, falling backwards, basically doing nothing. It's like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad we got rid of him. No offense to him, but it just didn't work out here. And hopefully he figures it out there, but that's, it's, you know, he had a good rookie year. And then after that, he's been, he, he just ain't it. And we got a good pick for, are we, I mean, yeah, it's yet to be seen where what pick, but I mean, it's going to be high. It's got to be a solid pick. Yeah. It's a solid pick. Right. Yeah, I hope he does well in Chicago. I, I really like the kid, and I feel like whatever was happening where we just weren't gelling with him, do you know what I mean? I think some of it was to blame on the offense and the play calling, and the O-line was definitely an issue last year. So I feel like some of those things were an issue, but I also think there were some things that were on him that he, you know, just kind of had like that sophomore slump last year a little bit. And I mean, it seemed like he had moments this season where you saw some of the flashes of what we saw during the rookie year, but it just wasn't consistent enough. So I hope he's find success in Chicago. Sometimes that fresh start or new offensive package, something changes something for him. I think he's a, he's a good kid. So I hope it works out. Yeah. He was only there. He hadn't even been there like a week. Right. When he started, yeah. So like, yeah. you know, it, as much as you're right, Joe, like it was his greatest hits. It seems like okay, let's let's give this guy some time. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, Chicago's you know, maybe, coming into their own a little bit. You know, that's another team that's like improving each week. Do you know what I mean? As the season goes on, and um, on our podcast last week, we had a guy on who does an NFL podcast who's a Bears fan, and so we were talking about some of this stuff a lot and how they've really invested themselves in this huge rebuild and just said like we're giving up on 2022 and. and we're dumping everything into this rebuild. They're going to have like over a hundred million dollars in cap space for next season, which is incredible. Well, the main thing they wanted was just to see Justin Fields progress. Yeah. And yeah. he has. And he has. And so yeah. it's so encouraging because now we're seeing it with Kenny Pickett, the struggling, just like Justin yeah. Fields did in his first year and yeah. even even somewhat this year. But now he's starting to figure it out and he's starting to do it's his thing. It's just so common. I don't understand like all the people that are really freaking out about Pickett. Like it's way I too agree. soon to be freaking out. Do you know what I mean? He's, it's so common for these young kids to struggle like this. You got to give them some a little bit of time. Yeah, you don't want to crush. It doesn't seem like he'd be easy to crush his confidence, but no. he's, he's just getting beat up already. And it's like, yeah, no, chill, chill. Yeah, and people will say like, I know that so and so struggled as a rookie, or rookies commonly struggle, but this guy sucks, and he's got to go. And we need to draft a quarterback. Like, just calm down. Look at calm the down. other rookie quarterbacks. Malik Willis can't yeah. complete a pass. That mm-hmm. Sam yeah. Ellinger stinks. Yeah. So it's that's just you, you, that's just how it is with a rookie quarterback. And, admittedly, it takes, you know, those guys weren't like the greatest quarterbacks to come out of college yeah. football. It just yeah. was such a weak draft class. But I mean, even when you look at like Tua and uh what's his face, the plays for the Eagles, you know, I mean it takes Jalen Hurts, right? It takes these guys time. I mean, even Trevor Lawrence isn't where people thought he was gonna be. Do you know what I mean? It takes it takes these guys time. And especially when the rest of your offense is kind of spotty with like such a terrible, like all the issues we've had on O-line and some of the stuff that's been going on with the receivers, just not connecting. I mean, it, it just takes time. Najee being hurt, mm-hmm. terrible play calls. I mean, yeah, he, he can't and do Josh it himself. In his first year and a half. Yeah. Was, Josh Allen went through the same thing with, yeah. with yep. the media and the Bills fans. Like, oh my God, did we make the right decision? And he was a higher, I'm pretty sure he was a higher pick. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So yeah. Um, one interesting thing I, I I'm looking forward to seeing now that Chase Claypool is traded is so it, it, it I mean not that George Pickens wasn't getting playing time he was getting a lot of snaps but now he be he goes from being like wide receiver three to wide receiver two right. so now you have no choice he's going to be out there the whole time yeah mm-hmm. he was getting snaps but not targets as much yeah. as he should have right. you know what i mean yeah. so he needs to be targeted more often i would hope mm-hmm. so they it sounds like sims is going to get you know is going to be the slot receiver and stuff it's like okay um We'll see. That that's interesting. We'll yeah. see if if that develops into something. Right. Yeah, yeah, we haven't really had the opportunity to evaluate him in that role yet. Do you know what I mean? But he's done some good things on special teams. So yeah, I feel like I'm there's at least optimism. The, and that's pretty much what he did in Washington, right? Or no? Yeah. I'm not sure. But Washington also like horribly misused yeah. him. Do you know what I mean? He just wasn't. Washington misuses, Washington misuses everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's Players, employees, to everybody. They just it's hard misuse. to compare anybody to time played in Washington. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 just yeah. I mean, we just got to see some progress with this offense. Y- yeah. You know, you know, is you know, can the running game get going? Can they get some some passing going? Can can just some that's we just want to see progress at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I keep seeing people on Twitter saying that, like, forget your low draft pick Steelers fans. They're going to go on a tear after the bye week and almost win out the rest of the season. Do you guys think that that's, like, actually possible? I mean, I know anything's possible, but what do you think about the likelihood of that? They have four divisional opponents in the final half of the last nine games, and that's that's rough. Including... Well, Including the Browns with Deshaun Watson back. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. So I guess uh, Steven Sims, not to change the subject again, but he did, he played in the slot 610 yeah. in Washington. 
So yeah, he was in the slot the majority of the time. He played a uh, wide left was like the second the second most snaps that he had in Washington. So okay, but yeah. This see, there, I, I'm I'm on two sides with will this will the Steelers have a good second half? First of all, on the side of yes, the schedule is much much weaker than it was. They're not playing Bills, um, at Dolphins, at Eagles. You know, they're playing the freaking Colts who don't have a, a coach who picked a dude coach <laughs> just just literally some guy off the street. Yeah. Yeah, random. What are they doing? Also, think our division great. isn't as tough as we thought it was going to be. Do you know what I mean? They haven't been great by any stretch. So, I mean, that that to me, even though that always is like mental and tough, it's not as tough as it has been in the past. Yeah. And and the other thing that really is going for the Steelers is uh, TJ Watt. Yeah. And that's going to make the defense much better. And so – you know, the offense just has to be a little bit better and they could win these, you know, yeah, 17 to 14 games or whatever, you know. Um, so so I, I you know, so in that sense, I think they'll have a bet like, you know, maybe they'll go five and four or six and three in the next nine or something like that, and, and they have yeah. an eight, eight and nine record or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the other hand, what if the offense doesn't get better? What if Kenny continues to struggle? What if they still can't run? What if, and, and then it doesn't matter who you have on defense, who you have anywhere, they're not going to win games. So I don't know. All, all I, offensive draft picks next year, first, all seven yeah, rounds. Yeah, it's got to be. We have got to, we've said this over, over. Tough, you got to, yeah, look at those less sexy picks for, for the low draft number, like no dra- low draft picks next year. We need line, both offense and defense. You know what I mean? Exactly. We have to look at some of those things. Need to be looking at a replacement for Cam Hayward. You know what I mean? Just building up some of those fundamentals. We just don't have them. We've got really awesome sexy players on both sides of the ball, but, but not those foundational ones that you need. And and we've got to look at that. I mean, that if we're going to be critical of anything that we've done drafting, it's, it's been not giving some attention to the, to the line. It's so true. It's so true. Stop with this. Stop with the sexy picks. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Meat and potatoes. That's what we want. We really, yeah, we need it. I mean, it's been, I forget, I had it written down somewhere, but how long it's been since we drafted like a solid lineman. And it was like five years, six years, something. It's been a long time. Just crazy. Ridiculous. I mean, it, yeah, you have to, those, those positions are just as important as the other positions. You know what I mean? Your wide receiver can't catch balls if you don't have people out there blocking for them. And you just have to, have to replenish those. Well, I mean, okay. So in theory, you have your, your franchise quarterback. You have to give that franchise quarterback as uh, everything he can to succeed. And that's a good yeah. offensive line. Mm-hmm. So whatever you got to do, fix that offensive line. It's not yeah. totally broken. It's not totally no, bad. Some good parts. It's better than it was. Um, Last year. So. Um, and that's good because, you know, then it's not looking at like a total rebuild. So you look at where those weak spots are and, and focus on those. And and like you said, make sure you're giving your quarterback everything he needs. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think it's Javon Hargrave was like the last really good. Are you, were you talking about defensive when you were talking well, about Dolph, defensive or offensive? I, I, yeah, you know, but I was talking yeah, about the I mean, offensive Har- line. Hargrave and, and Tuit. And honestly, well, ever I think since, it was Tuit that I was thinking of. Yeah. Ever since Tuit's been gone, that defensive line has not been the same. Yeah. They have not been able to replace him, and they've been weak on the run ever since. Yeah. And that has yeah. to stop. You got to stop that. So that they, they got to get a good uh, yeah. defensive line one way or the other. Yeah. I was really shocked that they didn't address that more in the last off season. I, I kept waiting for it. I anticipated it when they didn't draft. I was like, okay, well, they must have free agents they're looking at. And that didn't mm-hmm. happen. And I was like, 
Uh, all right, we're just gonna pretty much do the same thing again. I'm okay with Larry Ogan Joby, but the problem is he's hurt, yeah. which is has has been his problem. And the yes. other problem is Tyson Alualu has reached his, his expiration date, yeah. so yeah. you know you can't count on him anymore. So Larry O, I think he's only he's only a rental, right? Isn't he just? Here? I think he is just a rental. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're gonna have to address that again. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but those yeah. are two significant pieces. Do you know what I right. mean? And if they're not not where they need to be, and then you know, do we need to look at something else for center? Or are we good? You know what I mean? So there's to me, there's just I think center's good, and I think yeah. I, I think Mason Cole's good. I think James Daniels good. Mm-hmm. Chooks, I guess. I mean, they already they're, they're paying him, so you know you you're stuck with him. But yeah. Dan Moore, well, he's not and- the worst this year. I mean, the, you know, last year he was like the biggest gaping hole and this year it's dan moore yeah. yeah it's either dan moore and kevin dotson have to go yeah oh, so you and, need and to they're, they're you need penalties. to replace them penalties are outrageous from from are killing us yeah yeah it's like and then it just that just boils down to discipline you know they just don't see yeah. that well discipline and ability if you're constantly getting beat sometimes the only thing you got to do is hold so right. yeah That's, yeah it's um but a legal man downfield. I mean, that just seems to be like the come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's but that's also some really weird, stupid thing the officials are are uh f- fixating on for some stupid reason. Yeah, right. It is, but if you know they are, then you're it's on you, your donors right. on you to make sure you stop doing that's it. True. Some of that's that true. stuff is is coaching and and in discipline. And I yeah, I agree. I, I just think but it's frustrating when you see those same penalties over and over again. And especially when you're this far into the season. Right. Yeah. All right. So let's predict the next nine, the remaining nine games of the season. How many wins do you think they get? It's 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 the, the schedule is home to the Bengals, home to the home, to the saints, then home to the Bengals, which changed to a 425 game. Thank goodness. Uh, and they don't have Jamar Chase. It seems like the Bengals are like, we yeah. are without TJ Watt. They can't win without Jamar Chase. But I right. sort of feel like five and four. I know it sounds very homery, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. Not as bad as the six and three, I was going to say. I'm super optimistic. It's, hey, yeah. Hey. Remember, remember when we started before the season, our I predictions, know. we I were know. all guessing like 12, 13, 14 wins. I know. I know. I think I mean, we've got a real later. shot to win at the Saints. I think we've got a real shot to win at the Bengals. I think we've got a shot against the Colts and the Falcons. I mean, that's four right there. Yeah. Yeah. And the Raiders, you look at the Raiders and it's like, we should be able to beat them, but we always never do. That's true. But well, it's I Immaculate know. Reception Day. Right. You it is. cannot no, lose on immaculate no, reception day. You can't lose. You can't lose. No, I absolutely cannot. It is some kind of weird mental thing with the Raiders, though, where every, like, no matter how terrible they are, well, we can't beat them. But I do agree that this year might be different. Because hmm. that would be the kind of weird thing we'll win. Like all these other games that we should have won, we don't. But then we'll go in and, and win that one that we never win or whatever. Mm-hmm. Very Steelers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Panthers is also a guaranteed win. Yeah, Colts is a guaranteed win. Easy I, with the guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> Let's slow it down. Yeah, don't go overboard. Actually, I think going to be in Atlanta for the Falcons game. So yeah, they win. if they don't win, yeah. there's going to be a lot of black and gold in Atlanta. That's you guys are going to be there. there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, we're excited. That is so cool. Yeah, I put a tweet out yesterday asking who all was going and got a bunch of responses from people who said awesome. they'd be there. So that's really cool. I'm excited. Awesome. But I'm telling you, I think I, the Falcons are actually sneaky good. Yeah. That might be a I tough game. I don't think game. that's any guarantee win. I think it's going right. to be a tough game. Yeah. 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 But I'm excited that that they flex the Bengals game because, you know, I'm old and I, I can't go to bed at – you know, I, hate I can't the late sleep games. after games, and and I want to just, I want to, you know, it's so those, like, those games are just so just those eight thirty uh, games are so yeah. hard. Oh, yeah. they take me they forever to well, like plus, calm down. The Colts are the week after, and that was supposed to be a prime time game too. So you know yeah. they're gonna flex that. You know what I mean? So it's like I don't think like, they this is can. Actually, it's a like, Monday shit, night game. Oh. Yeah, oh, I don't think they can change Monday night. You're right. Yeah, they're stuck with that. Good point. 
point. That's gonna be that's gonna be funny. Yeah, all even... America's just gonna be like, oh my god, really? This is the money. Yeah, this yeah. is what we're I mean, watching. Hey, I respect the Colts because they're all about the tank. They are not. Yeah. They're they're not mix they're not hiding it they're basically saying we're tanking yeah. we got a dude that uh, that barely has 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 heard of football and we're bringing him as a coach yeah well, i, I mean, guess he's like a pro he is like a hall of fame center so i won't he's, say that he yeah but he's you know coach. it's that's it's, not it's, the same as coaching though no which is crazy i mean that's it's like saying the new coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers is Marquise Pouncey or something like that. It's right. Or, like, or Ben Roethlisberger. R- right, right. Right. There are and, fans that want that, which is bizarre. Bizarre to me that they should hire Ben as the new offensive coordinator. I'm like, just because somebody played doesn't mean they're a good coach. Like, I mean, good, I don't, I'd like it better than Matt Canada. Don't get me wrong. Be willing to give it a shot, but good like, players. Really, good players make lousy coaches. A lot of times um, it's true. A, a lot of people are saying Peyton Manning should be the coach of the Colts or the offensive coordinator or something like that. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, he's smart, but you know, the, the problem with good players is they're good players look at the the, the, the players on the team and say, Why can't you be as good as me? Like, because yeah. we're not. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I think they also look from their position a lot too. And then it's hard to see from like the full balcony of like everybody else's. Do you know what I mean? To see the big picture. I don't know. I just, to me, the, the really successful NFL coaches are never the guys that were like the best quarterback 12 seasons ago or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's, they might've played, but I don't, you don't see a whole lot of them that had like tons of professional success and then coach. It's, Bill it's Collar the, was not a pro bowl linebacker. So no, exactly. It's the scrubs. And, right, and that's, yeah. yeah, usually the scrubs make the best coaches because they had to yeah. work hard to get mm-hmm. to where they were and be smart, smart and hard work hard. Yeah. They didn't have their, their natural given ability. They just had right. to figure it out. So that's, that's and such a love of the game, like so much passion for the game to just be like a student of football. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and um, and, and another thing is to be a coach in, in any NFL coach, you basically have to dedicate like all of your life to it. Like mm-hmm. you have no spare time. You're you're doing something twenty four seven. Does Ben or Peyton Manning, who's made like a quarter of a billion dollars, do you right. think they want right. to you know sleep in the office because they're because they're working the whole time? Like screw that. I'll go play golf. Right. Well, Ben made it pretty clear by the end of his career, like he wasn't spending any more time doing any extra crap than he had to do. Do you know what I mean? He's like, look, I've been here this long. I'm plug and play. I'm not coming in for anything extra. He took Wednesdays off. He just said, right, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to say? I mean, yeah, go ahead. Right. Ben Roethlisberger, you know. Ah, <sighs> Okay. Also, Elson, what was your prediction for for? Oh yeah, you said five, five and four. And four yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go five and four too. So we'll we'll see. Yeah. But I mean, our predictions mean nothing because, like I said, no. you know, back okay. in back in September, we were so young and naive and thought they would win yeah. 12, 13, 14 games. And not, not, not well, like, sometimes you feel like the beginning of the season gives you this like feeling for how the rest of the season is going to progress or you're you're seeing something for how the rest of the season is going to progress but this has felt so disorganized and chaotic not even just like straight trash like there's been moments of brilliance there's been mm-hmm. moments where you get your hopes up do you know what i mean it makes it hard to feel like oh we're just going to tank for the rest of the season or to feel like we're going to have like a really strong finish what is the biggest factor in the Steelers being um, having a crappy record so far? Was it TJ Watt being hurt or is it, I don't want to blame everything on Matt Canada, but just the offense in general stinking, which was the bigger factor? I, I think it's the I offense. Think it was Watt because they were, they were causing a lot of chaos. They were causing, they were wreaking havoc when he was there. Not, not just him, but like everybody around him. Including Minka. I mean, I sort of feel yeah. like it's odd. The secondary seems not as good since he left. You know what I mean? So it's, I think Minka's hurt. They were really. I think so. 
Oh, that's right. He was out for a couple games, wasn't he? Or a game or something oh, like that? He, I think he was out. Yeah, I think he was out one game. Yeah. Um, and like, like you, you keep hearing sometimes on the injury report that he has like a knee issue. So I think he's oh, right, he's not yeah. at a hundred percent because yeah. like Minka at a hundred percent would not have allowed like that one play against yeah. the Bills and that and that um what what um AJ Brown did to him. He would right. not have allowed that if he was at a hundred percent. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Yeah, we we were turning, we were getting takeaways when when Watt was around and the, and the defense was he- and the secondary was healthier. So I, I feel like they were they were some of the reason why we have such a such a high uh, points per game. And I'd say high because it's very low, but the, the defense was responsible for a lot of those points early on in the season. So yeah, sort of mis- misleading. And and remember, yeah. they easily could have beat new england that was mm-hmm. that was gunner olszewski giving away the game right. off, on a, on a yep. muff punt they they could have beat the browns mm-hmm. yeah it was it, you know it was a 12 point game but it was it was close the whole way they should have beat the jets and and they they could have and should have beat the dolphins so we're mm-hmm. talking about we're talking about a five and three team yeah. or a four and four team instead of a two and six team. And then we're having a completely different yeah, discussion totally different. Mm-hmm. about, you know, can we, can we win the division? Can we make the playoffs? Yeah. Can we, and now we're, we're talking about draft position. Right. Yeah. To me, I think it's a real 50, 50 split. Like there's been games that you've watched, like the Miami game where our defense failed to capitalize on, on things that would have won us the game you know, had, had yeah. they had those interceptions. So I think there's like, but then by that same, token when the defense has done well like even in that Bengals game we won but our offense struggled to take advantage of anything that the defense handed us you know what yeah. I mean they get an interception they cause a fumble and then you know we go three and out once we get the ball so it feels hard to place the blame on like either side completely because I think they both have culpability and I was kind of riding like the offense. This is all offensive issues because I felt like we had our defense at times playing really well. But like during that Miami game, I was like, yeah, they're they're not without Watt. I mean, they're really struggling. Yeah. We will see. I'm I'm I was after the uh after the Eagles game, I was pretty depressed. Like, do I even want to watch the rest of this? And it's like, now I'm excited. I want to see what, yeah. what happens one way or the other. I want to see how, how, how this all turns out. So, yeah. Hey, and if, and if it's a, it's a failure and they don't win games, that's good too. get better yeah. draft position. And they're going to learn win. hopefully from it in the off season. Yeah. yeah. If they continue to lose, you would hope that. They right. Would. Oh, Oh, oh. The, the, the minute the season is over. They're 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 um they're they're turning off uh, Matt Canada's uh, security card, and they're they already they they already have his stuff like in a box. Like please please get out of here, just 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 go go. They better dude. not even let him ride like the bus back to the facility after the game. He can like Bro. Uber back to his U- exactly Uber Uber just 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 <laughs> here's the street. Good right. luck. Just just get just out. go go get yeah. out. I certainly hope so. I, I certainly hope so because yeah. even if we even if we split the remaining games and do okay, like that's just not good enough. I, I, I it's just not good enough. It's, it's something's got to give. And I no. still feel like even if they do better in the second half of the season, and I still feel like if Matt Canada comes back next year, all hell is gonna break loose. Oh yeah. Oh, people are gonna go nuts. I yeah. mean, they're nuts well, that he's back right, after the too. bye. Yeah. yeah. See, there was no chance of it's like, whoa, should they should fire him at the bye week or something like that? They don't do that. They're but not gonna do that. But okay, after the season's over, I don't care how many yeah. I don't care if he has a hundred year contract. Do you get rid of him right now? Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Well, uh adios, bro. Yeah. There should become kind of clause in their contracts. Like if you suck as badly as he does, then like they can can let you out of it. Because otherwise, like you just sit there and maybe he's just happy to collect a paycheck for two or three years and then he's gonna ride off into the sunset with his money. He's not worried about it. He's invest that's what he's doing up in the booth, is investing his paychecks so that he has something to live off of for the rest he's of the He's probably life. really <laughs> stupid investment in Bitcoin yeah. or something like that, or some right. some some he's probably making up his his own court Canada coin or something like that. Right. Yeah. Canada. You, you think he's going to make, you think all of a sudden he's going to make good decision, good financial decisions. Right. Look, look right. 
It's a wonder he gets can get back to his house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the contracts are going to start having a Matt Canada clause. Like if you suck right. this See? bad, yeah. we have we have we have reason to terminate you on the spot. That's that's right. a Canada Immediately. clause. Yep, Canada clause. I like it. <laughs> I'm I'm mad at payroll. I'm mad at payroll for paying him. They should uh yeah they, they, they should stop pay, giving him checks and 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 the IT department for uh for for not changing his password. I'm 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 mad I'm mad at the Steelers organization. Yeah. Hey, if you burn the French fries at McDonald's every week and every day when you go to make fries, you burn the French fries. Eventually, you get fired. They try to remediate you once or twice, and then they let you go. You don't last. I mean, he's something more imp- important than the French fries. They need to write him up. They need. They need. Yeah. You got. He needs. He needs to get written up. Attention, attention for you, Matt Canada. Right. Off you Corporate go. retraining, and then he has to go. You have to write on the board a hundred times. I will not suck. I will not suck. I will not suck. <laughs> right. I will not do run, run, pass at the right. beginning of every yes. drive. Yes. I will develop new plays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the middle of the field is a thing. Right. See, that's what he was doing during his bye week. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this this has been fun. It has always. We'll see, we'll see how we'll see how the, I'm excited now. I'm excited how the season's going to go. So we'll see. Five and four. All right. I'll, I'll see you guys. Bye. All right. Bye.